Hey guys, Yips here coming with a video and this one's going to be about two uh, boss kills and basically talking about how you should be playing as an affliction lock based off Warcraft logs. Now, I know a lot of you guys are raiding mythic and stuff and trying to progress and you know, sometimes you're trying to improve your DPS and by improving your DPS, it's really good to go back and look at your log and I'm going to show you some of the things that you should be looking for on a single target log and a multi-target log and I really think that these things are so key that it's really going to help you notice what sort of mistakes you're making as well as how to exemplify your gameplay. So this is a Sisters of the Moon heroic kill. I'm not using any crazy gear, but I managed to do, uh, how much is it? Uh, 1.4 million DPS, which is not bad on a 4 minute single target pull, especially considering I'm only 930 item level, using Power Cord and Safu's Secret, my weapon's 959, my gear is not crazy, but it's decent enough, and I was able to do really, really good DPS, and I kind of want to show you guys what sort of things you should be looking for in a single target log, and I also have a Mistress Sazine kill on Heroic, this is the exact same, uh, day that I got this boss kill, the DPS that I did was 2.1 million, I was running a dot spec, so this log here will show you how to deal with AoE dotting and will show you all sorts of different things and you can compare with yourself. So first and foremost, let's look at single target. So first off, the things you should be looking at single target are obviously drain up time, dot up time, and then also unstable affliction usage, and that's gonna be the most important thing is the unstable affliction usage. It also comes down to a little bit about how you're using your reap souls. Uh, this fight I got a little bit lucky, but I will be talking about that and briefly mentioning it during the video. So the first thing to note when you're looking at an affliction lock on single target is you should first go to the resources, and then you should look at soul shards. If you're a warlock and you go here and you look at your soul shard count, so again, go to resources and click this drop down menu, go to soul shards, and you see your shard count not look like this and you see it constantly going down to zero. So this is zero shards, one shard, two shard, three shard. And you see constantly you're sitting at zero shards you're not doing it correctly. You're not playing single target efficiently as an affliction lock. You really need to be managing your shards well because of things like reap, because of things like fight mechanics, because of things, just the nature of the way that Warlock plays right now. So a lot of locks, I'll go to their single target logs and I'll see, you know, they'll be at three shards and then they'll dump down to zero because they'll cast three UAs in a row and then they'll cast one UA and one UA and they'll, oh, they'll get back up to two and then they'll cast those right away. You do not want to be playing like that as an AF lock. The way you want to be playing is managing your shards. So you can just see here very clearly by this graph that I never really ever go below two shards. I'm constantly managing them, constantly only spending one to two UAs and draining them. Now you might think, oh, but you know, back in the day, back in Nighthold, I was spamming so many UAs. You cannot do that anymore. You don't have enough shards and the fights are way different. You don't have effigy to rely on. Um, you have to play differently. So when we look at my casts, you can clearly see my UAs, you know, they're stacked pretty well, but I never really, aside from the beginning where I got kind of lucky on Soul Conduit, if we look like at this location here during the fight, later on in the fight, see how I'm casting, you know, 1, 3, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2. I'm never really casting too many unstable afflictions. I'm maintaining my shard count, and the reason you have to maintain your shard count is because you need to save it for when you have reap. So when you do have reap, you have an excess amount of shards that you can use. So say, you know, you're sitting at three shards, you know, you have two stacks of reap. You don't really want to use two stacks of reap. You kind of want to let it build up more so you can have a longer burst window. Um, you want to save up that reap. And then, send, you know, once you have four or five stacks, you can have three or four shards ready and available to use with those stacks of reap. And that's how you kind of want to be thinking on single target. For example, a really good example on Mistress is, you know, saving some reap for the phase with the moon talon because that's two target cleave, which is more damage than single target so obviously you gain more benefit from reap that way and you can save your um you can save your reap for that moment and then you'll have that excess shard build up to where you can use it on single target now you just want to make sure of course at the end of the fight when you look at your soul shards you are dumping them all and uh you're going down to zero shards at the end of the fight which is fine but generally speaking throughout the course of the entire fight you want to be spending only one to two UAs, maybe three. This allows you to get more drain up time on your UAs. It allows you to get more use out of your reap souls and it allows you to proc your belt more as well. So there's just a lot of really good things going on if you see this in your graph, okay? And then obviously when you look at casts, you really wanna see your UA spaced out quite nicely as well as having really high drain soul up time. If you're able to do that, uh, I guarantee you your single target's gonna go way up. Also, a lot of Warlocks, what I see is I wanna show you guys something really quickly here. 
a lot of warlocks i will see their reap souls just like be all over the place like every time they get one reap they'll press their reap souls and use it you don't want to do that you want to save it up for where you have a reasonable amount and are able to maintain it so when we look at my buffs you saw uh, i'm able to maintain reap pretty much throughout the full fight here that's a little bit due to rng but even if i wasn't you can see here how i barely use any reap in the opener and save it all for the moon talon phase here uh, this is the second phase of the boss fight see how i barely use any in the opener just a little bit with the bloodlust and then i use it all towards the moon talon phase that's what you want to be doing on your aft block okay uh, moving on to the next thing, so that's single target, so just make sure you have a couple of those things down uh, in your logs as well. And let's look at multiple target. Now, I think multi-target is definitely the best way to review your logs because there really are some telltale things on a lot of boss fights in Tomb of Sargeras, uh, and I think Mistress Azina is, is a great way to try to show that. So... Obviously, on Mistress Shazine, uh, you want to be running a dot cleave spec on Heroic. On Mythic, you want to be running a dot single target spec, but it still pretty much plays the same. There's just a few extra things you can do on Heroic to pad your damage a little bit higher. But obviously, on Mythic, you want to keep the damage on the uh, the eels to, to a minimum, but that doesn't mean that you don't want to dot them, and it doesn't mean you don't want to drain them and do a lot of good things that I show you in this log, okay? So I would say the most important thing to look at in a log on multi-target is going to be the sequence of casts. So you see here a lot of unstable afflictions. We're just going to kind of ignore that because it doesn't really tell the tale of the story, okay? The main thing you want to focus on, especially for a boss fight like Mistress Hussein or even Harjitan, is your Agony casts, your Seed of Corruptions, and your Drain Souls. And I want you guys to notice a pattern here, okay? The pattern is Seed of Corruption, a bunch of Agonies, a little bit of a gap, and then Drain Souls. So the reds is the uh, Seed of Corruption, the uh, blue bars here is the Agony, and the gray bar here is uh, Drain Soul. Now, the reason you see this on multi-target fights, and you'll see this on any multi-target fight, you would have seen this on Gul'dan uh, for the eyes, you would see this on Botanist, you would see this on so many boss fights that have ads pop up around them, is because you Seed of Corruption to get your Corruption on everything, you Agony all of the new ads that come out, and obviously you're going to have a shard excess here, so you're spamming unstable afflictions. You see how in those gaps, um, oops, you see how in those gaps my unstable afflictions kind of fill up those gaps. You're going to have time where you're just spamming UA on everything, and then after you spammed UA on everything, you want to recover those soul shards, and that's when you'll be using your drain soul to recover your shards from all that you spent. So when looking at a multiple target boss fight, obviously you want to have really good, you know, reap usage because you'll have infinite reap. You want to have really good uh, soul harvest usage. You also really need to pay attention to this sort of play style and see how repetitive it is every single time. Seed, agony, 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 agony. Spam UAs. Make sure my shard count is really low. And then make sure that I'm draining back my soul shards. Now, really, really quickly, I want to show you guys something as well when we look at my resources and we look at my soul shards look how many shards i gained from drain soul and unstable affliction uh being expired on a dead target i gained 23 soul shards almost as more than my soul conduit just from draining ads and from casting ua on them before they died so i got free damage from the ua cast and i also got shards back from the Drain Soul. And when you look at the multi-target, you really should see these huge dumps of shards. You should be build up, build up, build up, and then huge dumps. And you can probably see that this basically aligns when my Seed of Corruption casts happen as well. So you see all of these spikes here in my shards where it goes up and up and up. Look here, it will align with my Seed of Corruption usage. So I'll have a lot of shards, I'll Seed of Corruption, get my Agonies out, cast a bunch of UAs on the boss and the adds because the adds will be dying and I can get those shards back from those UAs. And then at the end there, you'll be seeing the Drain Soul. So go into your log for a mythic fight, whether it be Mistress Sejin or Harzatan, and make sure, you know, maybe on Harzatan you're not casting Seed of Corruption, but make sure you see all of those agonies followed by a bunch of UAs and then Drain Soul. And that's kind of the key to success on multi-target, okay? So kind of keep those things in mind. Check your log. These are fairly simple things for you to look at uh, when you're trying to improve on single target and multi-target. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.